Hey, what's happening everybody? Welcome back to the Hybrid Network and yet another Dragon Ball discussion video. This past week's episode of Dragon Ball Super was actually pretty action-packed as we saw the leader of the Pride Troopers of Universe 11, Tapo, face off against Goku in a bid to PUNISH EVIL WITH HIS MIGHTY FISTS OF JUSTICE! Or something along those lines. I don't know. I just love that guy already. He's a force for all that's good in the world and fights for supreme justice. He's nearly as close to my heart as the one true hero and savior of justice. Great Saiyan Man! Oh, that mysterious hero, that nameless Avenger! Does his cry for triumph over evil know no bounds? You know, Gohan could learn a lot from that great Saiyan Man. Maybe he could train him a bit for the upcoming Tournament of Power, instill that mighty desire for truth. That mighty desire for justice! But I could go on all day about those two freedom fighters, so I'll just say that episode 82 was pretty awesome in its spectacle, making up for the somewhat lackluster Goku vs. Bagamo fight of episode 81. And while it was a good episode, we didn't exactly get any new information from it, the only real thing being that the team has less than two days to prepare for the upcoming tournament, so they have to find six other powerful warriors before then. But we already know who they pick, so there's no real need to go into that. No, today, I kind of wanted to rewind a bit and look at a past entry in Dragon Ball Super, taking a look at the future Trunks saga and one of the titular villains of the arc, Goku Black. Now sure, was the future Trunks saga perfect? No. But I still thought it was relatively enjoyable, offering some pretty amazing fights and a villain that differed from other antagonists in the series. At least he seemed to for a bit, before he kind of just... <sighs> Alright, we're not gonna get into it. I'll just say it was a missed opportunity for an interesting character, how about that? But one of the villains I took great intrigue in was with Goku Black. Now, the concept of an evil Goku, to me at least, was incredibly stupid when I first heard about it. What's the point? Didn't we have a movie on this? Turles! You all remember Turles, don't you? He ate from a tree, and got really strong from the tree. Like, sucked the power of the planet. He ate planet trees. Yeah, that guy. All joking aside, Tree of Might is actually a pretty fun movie, so I'd suggest watching it. But the fact remains that I just wasn't too into the idea of an evil Goku as the main villain for an arc. But surprisingly enough, Goku Black ended up being one of the cooler parts of the arc, introducing a new Super Saiyan form whilst also giving us a look at a Goku that's much more sadistic and vicious in his power and abilities. Okay, so it's not technically Goku, it's Zamasu in his body, but there's still the whole idea there about a Goku that's evil. It's a different way of playing with the characters whilst not necessarily using that character. It works the same way like Giorno Giovanna from Jojo's Bizarre Adventure. He was designed to be like a Dio that fought for different intentions and motivations. And if you don't know who that is or what Jojo's Bizarre Adventure is, then Google my young peons! So, Goku Black offered a pretty interesting look at Goku, and just what he might be like were he to have turned evil. The plot gets thicker though, because what if I were to tell you that Goku Black shares a bit of similarity with another antagonistic character, Zykor, from Dragon Ball AF. Dragon Ball AF? Isn't that the whole April Fool's Day thing? Why even bring that up? Well, number one, no one really knows what AF was supposed to stand for, most likely because it never existed. This is probably old news, but I feel it's necessary to get into because it plays a part into this. So, if Dragon Ball AF doesn't exist, who the hell is Zykor, you may be wondering? You just said he was from Dragon Ball AF, a thing you just said didn't exist. Yes, I did, because in my defense, Dragon Ball AF is not an official series in any way, shape, or form. To my knowledge, it was something crafted solely by the fan community, kind of breeding on this contained hype and excitement for a new Dragon Ball series after GT's end in 1997. Well, one such fan decided to put his contained hype into a tangible form, creating his own fan manga series titled Dragon Ball AF back in 2006. It's actually pretty interesting seeing this thing. It's like so beautifully drawn and it really emulates the style of Akira Toriyama's artwork, giving it a realm of readability as something in tune with Dragon Ball in general. But the important thing I want to take away from this is the character's Zykor. As you can probably tell, he looks a lot like Goku, and that's because he's a son. How, you may ask? Well, a certain Western Supreme Kai stole Goku's DNA while he was in a dream, and before you think it, no! It was a vial of blood, so just get that other thought out of your head. Shame on you. Waru. Anyway, she uses his DNA to give herself a son, one named Zykor, a half Saiyan, half Kaioshin, essentially creating a Saiyan god. Hmm. Now, I don't want to go too deep into the story because I think there's already enough similarity there as it is for you to draw your own conclusions. You know, an evil Goku, a Supreme Kai gone evil and wishing doom upon the earth. Hell, there's even a similar sequence where Vegeta battles against the figure only for Zykor to unleash a new form that he dubs Super Saiyan 5. 
Remind you of Rosé? Well, it's interesting to note the creator of this Dragon Ball AF manga, Toybol. Does that sound familiar? Well, it should, because Toybol is the artist that's actually drawing and helming the official Dragon Ball Super manga. What a twist, am I right? To think that a fan of the series would get to play such a huge part in the actual next step of the franchise. Ain't that the dream? It also sheds some light on some of the similarities between Goku Black and Zykor. Was Goku Black a callback to Toybol's early days writing his AF fan manga, or is it just a hapless coincidence? Coincidence. What do you think, as a matter of fact? Do you think that it's purely coincidental, a deliberate choice, or just some subconscious idea that made its way into the official Dragon Ball lore? Let me know in the comments down below, and if you want to learn more about the history and legacy of Dragon Ball AF, check out the Tao of Dragon Ball website. It's a huge database filled with blogs, trivia, discussions, and so much more concerning Dragon Ball. And it's actually where I look to for a majority of the research concerning Dragon Ball AF. I highly recommend you guys go check it out, even not just for Dragon Ball AF if you just want to learn more about the series in general. I'll put a link in the description. Well, thanks for watching everybody. Make sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of our content as it comes out, and we'll catch you next time on the next Dragon Ball Discussion!